And now it is World Immunization Week, a time to raise awareness about the important role vaccines play in helping to prevent potentially deadly diseases. In fact, results from this particular form of immunization, the HPV vaccine, showing remarkably effective results. That's according to a 2023 national report from the American Cancer Society. Despite the success of it, though, CDC is reporting HPV vaccines dropped significantly during the pandemic. So this morning we are joined by gynecologic oncologist Dr. Teresa Longoria from Scripps MD Anderson Cancer Center and Scripps Clinic here. Doctor, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm curious to see what's been happening with this HPV vaccine. So tell us, first of all, what it's used for. Why is it important for people to get? Well, HPV is a virus that can be tr transmitted sexually and can cause a number of different types of cancer. Um, people think of cervical cancer, but it actually applies to both men and women because there's head and neck cancers, anal cancers, other gynecologic cancers that are all um, impacted by this virus. Okay, so it seems like, you know, to prevent the cancers, HPV itself from spreading. This is something important people should be getting. Is it, is it for everyone or who are you Absol kind of encouraging to get? So the vaccine is approved for anyone between the ages of nine and 26. Oh, okay. And actually they estimate that about 36,000 cases of cancer related to HPV occur in the United States per year. 90% of those cancers can be prevented mm. with this vaccine. Wow, so it can be prevented. Tell me why it went down. Why do you think people stopped getting it as much, the vaccine? Well, that's, that's complicated. We think partially um, uh, COVID and a lot of the attention within the medical community, community being directed to COVID could have pulled away from the, the, the discussion around other vaccines. So we really encourage people to um, discuss these things with their primary care physicians, their pediatricians, to know what's out there and all ways that we can mm -hmm. improve our health in, in the long term. Right, we have this technology, right? The research has been done. Any negative effects of getting the vaccine at all that people should know about? It's actually very, very safe like most vaccines. Um, in clinical trials that were done in over 15,000 patients, they found that the most common side effect is just a local reaction um, in the arm, okay. uh, pain, redness, swelling. Otherwise, most other side effects that were reported were no different than when a patient got placebo. That's a, 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 an injection that just mimics a vaccine okay. but doesn't have any active component. And an ongoing monitoring continues. And in your field, gynecologic oncology, um, so tell us what you specialize in and what you've seen. I mean, these types of cancers, obviously life-threatening, right? I actually see this every day, the impact of this vaccine. Um, gynecologic oncology is a practice where we treat women's cancers. Um, people might think of ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, cervical cancer. And we truly have seen that 65% reduction in the incidence rates. Um, even in my time during training and in practice, it is much, much less common to see a woman with cervical cancer than it was in the past. Okay, which is promising, right? And directly related to people getting this vaccine. Right, and we'd always prefer to prevent a cancer than to have to treat a cancer. Right. I was gonna ask you too, the treatment of these cancers can't be easy. Uh, it's not something that you wanna ever be diagnosed with. No, not at all. I mean, it's challenging. It's usually a combination of surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. Um, for each person, it's indiv individualized and a bit different, um, but still very challenging for patients and their families. And might affect reproductive health in the future too. Absolutely, especially since cervical cancer is found in younger women. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of implications for um, being able to grow your family. Um, a question too, just with the younger population, if they're not sexually active, is it still important to get? Absolutely, okay. actually more important before you're sexually active okay. because we know that the younger you are when you get the vaccine, your immune response is better, and you also should get the vaccine before you've seen the virus before. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, you can get the vaccine as early as nine years old. Mm -hmm. um, the encouraged age is at least 11 to 12, but it's approved and recommended for up to 26. Okay, thank you for sharing your insight. Thank you for the time this morning. I know you're a busy woman, so we appreciate it. Great to be here, Netta, thank okay. you. Of course, we will be right back. We're gonna get a quick check of your headlines and of course your forecast on this Monday morning. So stay with us. We'll see you in just a couple minutes.